Russo'sBrand.com, where the pros are the pros. What do you got for Al? Tony Khan decided to take a shot at CM Punk in the at the All Ooh. In Media Scrum. As we know, Punk was in charge of Collision or whatever it was. He he was the guy backstage at Collision. Khan said, "I frank I frankly think." It's an easier it complete sense to use some an in-ring talent to be in charge of <laughs> other in-ring talent in an entire show. Yeah. I, I think that's brilliant. So Khan said, yeah. I frankly think it's an easier environment backstage at Collision than it was a year ago to do things. I think it's an easier flow between the two shows than a year ago. I think the locker room is in a much better place than it was a year ago, as evidenced by when we came up here versus what happened here a year ago, referencing the CM Punk, Jack Perry situation. Ruckus. One, why reference it at all? Let's forget this. Great why point. Do we, Great why point. are we beating a dead horse? Yeah. Two, is there any business to be done out of referencing it? If there's no business in doing it and that's not what you're selling, why are you even acknowledging that you're talking about it? When was this scrum done? After the show. After the oh. all-in show. After the all-in show. Three, why are we talking about anything other than all in? Why? We just came off of another success, I assume, right, for the company. Why are we not applauding that and only speaking about that and only directing the focus to that? Why would we even bring up anything other than that? That makes, that makes no sense to me. I'm going to I'm going to win the race. I'm at the Olympics. I've I've trained all year for this race. I'm going to win the race and then when I get up on the platform, I'm going to talk about all the races I didn't win instead of the one that I did. Well, that makes sense. And it's funny because that's after a big WWE event, that's all they do, Al. You if they 80,000 million people showed up, 73 always, always. billion social media like they <laughs> right always. in your of face. Boom. Yeah, yep. We're all gonna time. talk about what we did. Yeah, yep. We, and we are never gonna bring up something that we're not selling. Yeah, you yeah. Know, they I listen, they have incidents, they have stuff that comes up, they have black eyes. Do you see them ever putting the spotlight on it? Do you yeah. see them ever discussing it? That'd be like, hey, we just got done with SummerSlam, guys. And thank God Vince McMahon's not here. You know, you know, after that whole scandal and every what? You're not, you're instead of talking about SummerSlam, we're gonna talk about that black eye that was left on the company with Vince McMahon. They don't mention Vince at all. No. The only the oh. only people that Vince that they mentions Vince is all of you, all the fans, the only ones that talk about it. If you want to bury someone, cannot emphasize this enough. You want to bury someone. You don't talk negatively about someone to bury them. You don't talk about them. Great point. Now. Because the term to bury someone came from when you literally buried an individual in the ground. When you put someone in the dirt, when someone dies, when does someone really die, truly die? They don't die when you put them in the dirt. They die when you never mention their name again. That's when they die. They're gone. They're forgotten. They don't exist. That's how you bury someone. And if you want to bury CM Punk, or you want to bury Joe Blow, you don't talk negatively about them because you're actually putting them over. Yeah, you're keeping them alive. You're keeping them alive, and you're bringing attention to them. You're pointing them out. You want to bury them. We never hear their name again. Yeah. We never mention them. They never existed. That's why our show isn't called uh, burying the marks. Our show is called castrating the marks because we just cut their balls off. Oh, okay. big different. We don't kill them. We just cut the balls off. Big difference. Well, that, that's so much more humane. You know, Thank you. that's Thank you so much, much better. But truly, I mean, no, you're right. And and really, especially because C CM Punk works for WWE now. Yep. Why are we giving him any attention whatsoever? 
even backhanded attention. And especially, Al, when it appears like uh, there are no CM Punk problems at the WWE. Correct. So, yeah. okay, bro, he's, he it looks like he's got <laughs> no problems over there. Maybe they you guys seem, were the problem. They don't seem to be having any issues with him there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God, it, it certainly seems like you're the, you're the guys that seem to be the problem, not CM Punk. Is Tony Khan still upset about the CM Punk Errol Hawani interview where he where Punk made Khan look like a complete goof? Because after that, they released the brawl footage, which completely backfired. Now he's he's got to take a shot here at, at CM Punk. It's almost like he he's kind of thin skinned here, and he can't he can't move on from the CM Punk stuff and just worry about like you said what what they're doing. Well, because he's marketing to what. To what type of audience? To an audience that is privy to all of that and that l- thrives on that. He's marketing directly to internet and and newsletter readers who appreciate or like the quality of matches. They look for, oh, he's got a great work rate. They evaluate everything based off of quite honestly, like off of the Meltzer opinion and scale. And so if you're if you're marketing your company and your product to that audience, are you not going to kind of ply the trade of, of rumor mongering and, and sniping and making remarks and comments about even an issue that happened a year ago and exposing personal problems? Of course you are, because isn't that what is covered in most of those newsletters? Is the personal issue between this person and that person, and this resulted in that? That's and so that's he's holding true to form in where and what he's marketing to. That's true. I mean, that's true. You know, and and that audience eats that up. That you're never going to see that in WWE because they're. I don't think you will, but you never know anymore these days. Yeah. yeah, they're not trying to market to just that newsletter audience. They are to a degree, but not to the point to where they're really catering just to it. And Tony Khan and AEW really do. Yeah. And I think because we've discussed this numerous times that we're starting to see the fruit that that bears in the numbers that as far as attendance and TV ratings and et cetera, that are dropping. And because that that audience, even though it's 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 very rabid and it's very fanatical and very tribe like, it's also very fickle and it's also easy to bore and it's easy to lose because they just go, oh, you know what? I've watched AEW enough. It was it was new and it was cool for a while. I'll go back to watching New Japan, and then they may occasionally just pop in to watch AEW every once in a while. And then if there's an event, a large enough event that they think will be cool to go to, yeah, they'll attend. But will they go all the time religiously like they were at the beginning? No. Yeah. What else, Jeff? 